Good morning, USA, and welcome to another episode of the Bernie or Bust Show. Hope your Sunday is starting off well. Today's show is fueled by good coffee, as usual, and also these uh, organic cage-free eggs mixed, if you can imagine, with flaxseed ground up. A little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of black pepper. Quite good. Hope you can can join me in and bring your coffee with you. I've got a little extra, but I need to make some more. Breaking news. Nancy Pelosi's son was exec at gas company that did business in Ukraine. This is all very convoluted and difficult, so put on your thinking caps, make sure your coffee is strong enough, and, and we'll dive right in. Nancy Pelosi has a son, Paul Pelosi Jr. Now all this stuff jumps up in front of me. There we go. And Paul Pelosi Jr. visited Ukraine in 2017 to meet with government officials in connection to a business initiative, sort of like uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter. Now unearthed records reveal that Paul Pelosi Jr. was an executive of a gas industry company that did business in Ukraine. And his mother, Nancy Pelosi, was featured in one of the company's promotional videos. So she's <laughs> she's in the middle of this too. Now, you, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time in this article. The article details his involvement. It's, it's awful. He's, he's doing, it, it's a conflict of interest. It's the same problem as with Hunter Biden. We've got big conflicts of interest here, not just with Paul Jr., but also with his mother, Nancy. And so I'll link to this article and you can read how convoluted and twisted this all is. I just want to jump to the to the punchline and then back off and back away and then give you more detail about why this is important. Because if you're a diehard Democrat, you may just say, whatever, I don't care if her son got a little bit of an enrichment. But what we're talking about here is is a lot more complicated. What we're really talking about is the way U.S. power works and how it's all tied to mostly to big oil. And so this energy company, even though it's not all big oil, even though it's electricity and other things, we've got we, we've got the base of the United States power structure figured out. And it all goes through the CIA. And so here is an article. I'm going to jump to the punchline of this article and then go to the top so you can see what's going on. It's a counterpunch article. The punchline of this article, counterpunch punchline, is that Bernie Sanders' electoral chances and the entirety of the left politi political program require taking on the Democrats' donor class. So we won't have a Green New Deal. We won't have any way to save the environment without taking on big money. That was the conclusion of the Bernie or Bus show yesterday, that economic justice is going to have to happen before we can have climate justice. And, and here's why. It's all tied together. Mr. Sanders has made inroads by broadening the electorate and crossing the traditional left-right divide. This plus Mr. Trump inserting himself into the CIA's turf in Ukraine to bring Joe Biden down explain the sudden establishment interest in impeachment. So the punchline that we'll, we'll go back and prove is that the reason the establishment Democrats want to impeach Donald Trump is to keep their CIA machine of taking down foreign governments, especially Russia. Their, their uh, eye has been on the prize of Russia for a long time, which this article details. So they're going to lose their machinery. The CIA would go back to Ollie North and the... Um, cocaine deals that were made in South America. We, go, we can go back a long way with the CIA to see how they weaken governments and then take them down. And this is what they did under Obama. And this is what they want to do with Joe Biden. And all of this is threatened if we reveal 
how complicit Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi both are in Ukraine. So the the reason they're trying to impeach Trump when they didn't have any interest in impeaching him before, which I also talked about in a previous show, is because they they needed to um, protect the CIA oil in other countries machinery. Without impeachment, the primary process ends apace and voters have a real choice for president for the first time in five decades. With it, the marketing divisions of blue versus red drive unaffiliated voters away while solidifying the lines of division along party lines. That's the vote blue no matter who strategy. The establishment goal is to crush the left and stop its momentum. Impeachment is the tool of convenience toward this end. And that's why we have impeachment. No other reason. Because as I said in a previous show, the the things they would impeach Donald Trump for, the real things, that's, uh, if you go back, redacted tonight with, with Lee Camp, the things that would um, be impeachable, and there are many things, many good reasons to impeach Donald Trump, but this isn't one of them. Donald Trump was trying to drain the swamp. I have an article here with Michael <laughs> That's uh, Kathy Copeland Patton. I may not get to that one today, but uh, I'm glad you saw that picture. Mike, uh, Mike Pence is trying to defend Donald Trump right now. He said, one of the main reasons we were elected to Washington, D.C. was to drain the swamp. Although Pence, in this article, it's pretty clear that Pence would be happy to take over for Donald Trump. They they have a marriage of convenience, and it's it's always been strained. And Trump, there are noises that, that Trump doesn't trust Pence right now, for good reason. All the evangelicals would love it if Pence became president. And there's all sorts of power swirling around there. But the real point of this is that uh, Donald Trump was doing something good. He, he was trying to reveal Joe Biden's uh, scandalous, Joe Biden's... Um, the, the million dollar, billion dollar loan that he was using to get an investigator fired who was investigating his son. That's that's something that's in this article. You've got all kinds of, oh, let me tell you the name, impeachment brought to you by the CIA. So Rob Urey, this is his point. And he talks about what Trump is trying to reveal it needs to be revealed. So you shouldn't impeach Trump for this. You should impeach him for the other things that Lee Camp points out in, in the show a couple of days ago. So we've got a, a, quote, whistleblower who is really just a spook. If you, if you look at um, what Kate Johnstone says about it, MSM defends CIA's whistleblower, ignores actual whistleblowers. So she puts air quotes around whistleblower. And what we've got here, a savvy official, who is this courageous whistleblower who boldly shone the light of truth upon the mechanisms of power in the interests of the common man? Who is this brave, selfless individual who set off an impeachment inquiry by taking a stand and revealing the fact that the U.S. president made a phone call in July urging Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to help investigate corruption allegations against Joe Biden and his son? Well, believe it or not, according to the New York Times, this brave, noble whistleblower, who the mainstream media are currently championing, is an officer for the Central Intelligence Agency. So this whistleblower is just somebody working for the CIA to try to take Trump down before Trump takes down the CIA. So as much as we hate Donald Trump, we have to, to commend him when he actually tries to drain the swamp. And this whistleblower is just a spook on the inside, working inside the White House and, and trying to take down Trump before he takes down the whole power base and before they can install Joe Biden as as the new um, honcho. So there you have it, a mysterious stranger from the lying, torturing, propagandizing, drug trafficking, assassinating, coup staging, warmongering, psychopathic CIA was working in the White House 
heroically providing the political media class with politically powerful information out of the goodness of his heart and then vanishing off into the Langley sunset. Clearly, nothing is suspicious about this story at all. So, even to call this spook a whistleblower is ridiculous on its face. You don't get to call someone from the U.S. intelligence community a whistleblower unless they are whistleblowing on the U.S. intelligence community. That's not a thing. <laughs> a CIA officer who exposes information about government officials is an operative performing an operation, unless proven otherwise, because that's what the CIA does. It leaks information wherever it's convenient for the CIA agenda while withholding all other information behind a veil of government secrecy. So what happens when a CIA operative actually whistleblows on the CIA? <laughs> they end up the victim of a botched robbery or some other unfortunate event. The idea that the media needs to protect a high-level CIA officer making explosive claims about the president, which now have been used as the basis for impeachment proceedings, is such an insane perversion of journalist journalistic ethics, Michael Tracy tweeted today. Twitter has suspended my account, so the Twitter um, things don't show up in this article, but if you go to this article, you'll be able to see that tweet by Michael Tracy. I won't spend too much more time on this, but she does go on to, to talk about Chelsea Manning and how she's been treated for actually whistleblowing. And so this is a good read. Now, going back to um, the case to be made that the reason that they're trying to impeach Trump is to install Joe Biden and to uninstall Trump because he is um, shedding light on how crooked the CIA is. The CIA was the central protagonist in Russiagate. The origins of the new Cold War are found in Bill Clinton's first term when administration neocons looted, plundered, and moved NATO against a prostrate Russia. So Russia is the real prize here, not Ukraine. Ukraine is a means to an end. I, ho I hope this isn't too derpy for you. You know, derpy. <laughs> but we've we've got to we've got to understand even and that and I have this format which is a lot better than than a soundbite on CNN or MSDNC. So so if you, if you have the patience, we we really need to understand that Russia is what Joe Biden is there to conquer. They want they've been trying to conquer Russia for a long time. They've been trying to take Vladimir Putin down for a long time. Now, I'm no no fan of Vladimir Putin. I'm not working for him. I'm not. You don't need to put on my YouTube channel that I my uh, blathering here is being paid for by the Russian government. I'm not being paid for by anybody. And so you can you can say what you want to. You don't have to be a fan of Russia and Putin to understand that the way the CIA has been operating is crooked and stupid dangerous. And so I'm just calling a spade a spade here. Proponents of impeachment want none of the geopolitical back and forth that ties the CIA to U.S. actions in Ukraine, Russiagate, and now to impeachment. They don't want us to put the, to connect the dots and to see what's actually going on. But considered in context, the charges against Mr. Trump are almost arbitrary. Russiagate was a declaration of war by the intelligence community against a duly elected president. As argued below, the CIA's motive is to move its own foreign policy agenda forward without even the illusion of democratic consent. If you get your news from NPR or the New York Times, Joe Biden's threat to withhold $1 billion in U.S. aid to Ukraine until Ukrainian President Petro Proshenko fired the prosecutor who was investigating his son, Hunter Biden's role at Burisma Holdings, was looked into and no wrongdoing was found. Of course, the U.S., the Obama administration, controlled the government that found no wrongdoing. Even still, the charge that the prosecutor, Victor Shokin, was corrupt was later retracted in private. Rather than questioning why the Obama administration chose to overthrow the democratically elected president of Ukraine to install a puppet government hostile to Russia, 
American liberals simply accepted the Cold War mindset as it was handed to them. They're just controlled opposition. They just look the other way. And that's why they can't hold the uh, Republicans accountable for corruption because they're all elbows deep in the same corruption. And so they just look the other way. The official reason given that Viktor Yanukovych was corrupt was premised on the fact that he owned a hot tub. <laughs> we got to click on that link sometime and see. You, you should see what, what that's all about. But how corrupt was it for Mr. Obama to overthrow a democratically elected president in the first place? In other words, if elections grant legitimacy to political leaders and a political order, how is it legitimate for a foreign power, in this case the United States, with advanced logistics provided by the CIA to simply charge in and install a new government that answers to it and not the electorate of that country? So we go in, like we've been going in for years and years. I'm old enough to remember lots of other instances in South America. So the CIA planted, in fact, this with the CIA planted in the White House, this seems remarkably like what the CIA is attempting to do against the Trump administration. <laughs> They're trying to take down our appointed um, by the people president. They, they don't like Trump. He was an accident. They didn't expect Trump to be there. I don't like Trump either, but at least he was elected by the United States people. And the CIA, for many, many years, has been in the business of taking down leaders elected by the people and installing people who will answer directly to them. This is the tinfoil hat moment, but I've, I've long thought that they probably showed the JFK assassination video to every new president within a few days after they take office, after they take their oath. And, and this just, just um, backs that idea up. The CIA is nobody to mess with. During the Clinton years, American economic advisors were sent to Russia to advise the Russian government on how to reorganize the Russian economy along neoliberal lines. As true neoliberals, the American advisors looted the country. And uh, the people on the inside looted the country in the name of the power that the CIA granted them. The CIA is the logistical arm of American smash and grab. And out of this crisis, Vladimir Putin rose to power. So we've cr he's not the only despot we've created. We've created many despots over the years. But I would take Vladimir Putin over the CIA if I had to decide. I if <laughs> I'd rather not have either, though. Hillary Clinton was Barack Obama's Secretary of State when the Ukrainian adventure was being conceived. Russia was supplying Ukraine with oil and gas and was making a play to supply greater Europe. The Clintonites in the Obama administration saw Ukraine as a stepping stone to oust Mr. Putin and control the distribution of Russian oil and gas to benefit American interests. They're still trying to do that. That's what the impeachment of Donald Trump is all about. In a narrow sense, oil and gas is just a business, but in a geostrategic sense, if you control the energy, you control the company. And so there, there you have it. And that's why this breaking news with Nancy Pelosi's son shouldn't even really be a surprise. Because it was a gas company so it's, it's still fossil fuels, and, and it's still control. It's still geopolitically strategic. And both Pelosi and her son are in it just as much as Biden and his son. And it's all about the CIA having power and the United States people not having power. So if you're so keen on replacing Trump, don't replace him with Nancy Pelosi, and don't replace him with Michael Pence. It, you... You're not going to save the planet that way, and you're not going to break up this horrible CIA um, power that we've had. You can go back. You can read about Ollie North. You can read about the, the other problems in South America that I'm referring to. This has been going on a long time, and they want to keep it going for the foreseeable future. The CIA is the very root, at the very root, of the neoliberal establishment. And so this, this impeachment stuff is, is just about keeping 
the CIA in power, the deep state in power. So if we, if we stop wasting our time on the shiny object of impeachment and we work to get Bernie Sanders elected, nominated in the first round of the convention, that's the way to solve this problem. Because otherwise we're just going to be distracted. Tulsi Gabbard, um, I, I'm, I'm about over her because of, of her stance on, on um, single payer Medicare for all. And so she's, she's bothering me. But one thing she's doing right, she's doing a number of things right. But one thing she's doing right, besides opposing regime change wars and taking down Kamala Harris, is the fact that she doesn't want to get distracted with impeachment. I think she understands, either instinctively or, or she has insider information, that this whole impeachment proceeding really is to keep Biden and Pelosi and Schumer and the other neoliberal democratic uh, machine powerful people in power. These are the same people who were behind taking her down through the talent agency execs that, that I've talked about in a previous show. So she, she probably astutely understands where the power is. She knows on the Joe Rogan experience, she talked about the CIA she talked, Joe asked her what happens when they show you the, the video of JFK being assassinated. And she didn't say anything. And, and I was watching her face. She, I think she understands where the power is. It'd be pretty silly by now if she's been at it this long and doesn't get it. I think she understands that the impeachment proceedings are to keep the neoliberals and, you know, backed by the CIA in power. So read this political Politico article on Gabbard. She said last week that she supported an impeachment inquiry after reviewing Trump's comments and actions regarding Ukraine, but she has remained critical of other Democrats' rhetoric on impeachment, especially of impeachment references in fundraising emails sent by a number of candidates. Those Democrats are dividing our already fractured country. I think the ones she's referring to are the ones that want to keep the CIA in power. Now, one, one thing I have to say, to be fair and unbiased, there's, there's a staffer for Bernie who said, you have to balance, oh, um, she said, as she proved with Kamala, she's more than willing to say the things other people are definitely not willing to say. Julia Barnes, the national field director for Sanders' 2016 campaign. I hope she's not still field director because she says you just have to balance that with the fact that the other half of the shit she says is so completely off message for the party and the values that she espouses to represent. Barnes continued, noting that Gabbard was one of the last House Democrats to support an impeachment inquiry against Trump. Coming out against impeachment? Come on, is she really going to stand up on stage and say that? I can only imagine that that is an invitation for 100% of the participants just to cut her off at the knees. So here's, a, here's something to think about as we go into the next debates. If you see anyone cutting her off at the knees, you can probably bet, especially if it's Elizabeth Warren, you can bet that she's trying to protect Biden and Obama and the Clintons and the CIA. And they all know where their bread is buttered. They all know that it's the geopolitically strategic way of keeping control of oil fields. And, and that's why they're upset with Putin. That's why they've been trying to take down Russia. If you see Elizabeth Warren saying, well, why, do, why are we not working harder to impeach Trump? We need to impeach Trump. And if, if um, uh, Tulsi is referring to to Elizabeth Warren saying that, that she is campaigning on the idea of impeachment, that should just raise huge red flags with the breaking news about Pelosi's son, with what we already have known about Biden's son. Anybody who is pushing impeachment is pushing the CIA base of control. I don't know where else you're going to hear this than from Counterpunch and Politico and, and other lefties other lefties that are so far left that you'll never hear their voices on MSDNC and CNN. 
New York Times, WAPO, etc. You're not going to, or the Young Turks. You're not going to get this on the Young Turks, guaranteed. If you ask the Young Turks to cover this story, you'll see right away what's what's happening. They know their $20 million um, investment came straight from the operatives that are keeping the CIA in power. I guarantee you, you won't hear Jenk or Emma or Anna talking about the CIA machine. They'll they'll be screaming their heads off. I don't even know. I, I don't know this, so you have to check for me. But I, I'm betting they'll be screaming their heads off about impeachment. And if they are... They also know enough, just like Elizabeth Warren knows enough, to know that they're really rooting for the CIA to keep trying to take down Iran and Ukraine and, and Russia and all the other people who are in their way still from, from the, the kind of geopolitical dominance that they want. We can talk about China a different day, but, but you have to understand from this perspective what's going on. All right, that was a lot of information, and I applaud you if you're still here. I hope you have a great day, and hope to see you tomorrow. Keep on burning.